All right, we got UFC coming up, UFC 137 in town. Sam Stout's in studio, one of the UFC fighters. That's what you're walking into. We, uh, we have inane arguments some days. Like most of it, I think it's kind of entertaining, but I'm sure some people are driving home and they're like, what are these guys doing? But we are like a married couple. You know what that's like you, sometimes, right? Don't you look at your wife and you're like, what is going on here? Just watch out, guys. I settle uh, my arguments in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. We would never do that. There are radio guys, believe me. Oh. I, uh, I know people around the country who work in different markets, and uh, every once in a while there'll be, a, there'll be a choke or a punch. It's like a very testosterone-driven environment. I, I, this is like as close yeah, as we get. Radio, you know, yeah, it's, it's as close as we get. As it gets to, heated, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. It wouldn't work out well for me because I would be making a lateral move in that case. I'd be <laughs> lateral to the ground. Here we go. Yeah, You're not, yeah there you go. So. Okay. All right, Sam Stout's in studio. He fights for the USC. He's one of the 155 fighters. Uh, you're in town. Well, you're in town a lot, but we have a cool event going down. Nice event. Mm. Um, Sean Tompkins passed away a couple of months ago, and he was the guy at Tap Out, which is over on Hacienda. Uh, obviously, you're very tight with Sean. You can talk about your relationship. But to talk about the event coming up this Friday, 6 to 8, to benefit his memorial fund, and there's going to be some cool guests out there. Move up to the mic a little bit. Um, yeah, you know, Sean... Uh we're doing this uh, memorial event for him at um, the Tapo Training Center. It's at Hacienda and Valley View, and um, it's going to be a very cool event. Um, a lot of MMA personalities are going to be there, just kind of a meet and greet, kind of celebrating his life and his accomplishments. And we're also going to have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of be doing a lot of fundraising things for it. So um, we've got a lot of M MMA mer memorabilia that we've collected. For, you know, uh, a lot of guys have donated stuff and different different uh, prizes and and memorabilia and, and stuff. So if you're a collector, it's definitely a great idea to come out and uh, you can you can definitely score some uh, some good gear. 6 to 8 at Tap Out. It's on Hacienda, so if you're uh, near Mandalay, it's kind of just to the west, straight back from Mandalay. It's on the right side, left side. Uh, and, you know, very cool spot. And there are going to be a lot of big-name fighters out there. Sam Stout's going to be out there. Mark Hominick will be there. Uh, Boss Rutten, who's a former UFC heavyweight champion and now a uh, you know, big-time analyst for HDNet, is going to be there. Mike Straka, who's a uh, big-name media guy, is going to be out there. I'm sure lots of other folks. So, again, it's 6 to 8 at the Tap Out Training Center. I want you to tell people, because uh, you know, we know Sean. He was in here a lot. Great guy, polite, was, uh, was always up front. I, I liked him. You could just tell he's a, a good person. But tell people in Vegas who are not familiar with him, casual MMA fans, about Sean. Well, um, to me, Sean was well. Sean was not only my coach, but uh, he was also my my brother in law. He's married to my he was married to my sister, and um, I met him at you know sixteen years of age. I'm twenty seven now, and and uh, he really taught me everything I know about mixed martial arts. And also, you know, he was uh, Mark Hominick's coach and uh, Chris Hordesky. Those were, we were his kind of three core guys. But he became one of the the you know the best MMA coaches in in mixed martial arts he's really uh you know he really made a mark for himself he's been in corners for randy couture for vitor belfort um and you know the list just goes on uh of different guys that he's had the opportunity to tra to train and and really if you ask any one of them he really uh you know everyone has a story about sean he really touched uh, a lot of people's lives and, and and mma careers in a very profound way you mentioned he's your brother-in-law, so first of all, how are, how are you doing? How are you guys dealing with it? Because, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's, it's sad. I mean, 37 years old, and you know, yeah, it's tough it really, on you guys. It really caught us all off guard. It, it was, um, it's still been a very tough thing to deal with. And, um, you know, he was, he was my, my coach from the, the time I first stepped on the mats. I first, you know, got in the ring. I've, I've never had another MMA coach, so I think that's, gonna, that's been uh, one of the most difficult things in terms of my fight career to, to have to wrap my head around but it's also uh you know he was my big brother he was I, I met him at 16 and I really wasn't making all the best decisions and with my life and and he really put me on uh on a great path to, and and really I got to he's the the guy I got to thank for all the success I have uh in the sport of mixed martial arts today you know it's a unique relationship trainer to fighter and you know most trainers handle several fighters if not lots of them but it's not you know, it's not like a. I was gonna. It's not like a coach of a, a big team because you still have that one-on-one -on -one thing on fight night, yeah. and there's those individual moments yeah. where that person has to click with you. And you know, we follow boxing a lot. We know all you know a lot of the trainers around mixed martial arts. So talk about you know how important that is because that's your motivator. I mean, basically, that person is responsible if you don't have it mentally on certain days. He's got to instill that every day. Yeah, you know, the people. There's a, when it comes to mixed martial arts, there's a lot of team camaraderie. Uh, you know, you. You 
there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that get shed on the mats every day in training. But when it comes down to it, uh, and it comes and fight night comes, it's really just you and your coach. Um, and and you know you had to you have to have a very strong trust in with you know in your coach and and. I had that with Sean, and I think really every guy that that was in that sh- had Sean in his corner had that because he was just that kind of guy, you know. He mm-hmm. uh, he really had a way of making you feel like you were invincible when you walked into that into that cage. That's Sam Stout. Mark Hominick is going to be out at Tap Out Training Center as well. It's Friday. It's six to eight. It's an event to celebrate the life of Sean Tompkins and the uh, Tompkins Memorial Fund. There'll be plenty of other uh, MMA luminaries out there before UFC one thirty seven. So. Have you gotten back on the horse? Are you are you training? Are oh, you yeah, getting definitely. ready to fight towards the end of the year definitely. if you can? You know, I you know we I could have sat around and and uh, you know sulked about it, but I know that's not what Sean would have wanted. So you know myself and Mark Hominick and Chris Hordesky and all our guys, especially uh, the guys back back home in Canada, have really um, you know we've tried to squeeze something good out of the out of a negative situation, and we we've really uh, got a lot closer as a team. And uh, you know everyone's training hard. Uh, Chris Wardeski is getting ready for a fight in November. Mark Hominick is getting ready for the big UFC in Toronto coming up December 10th. So, uh, and you know, I'm hoping to get on uh, the new the December 30th card in here in Vegas. So, uh, yeah, we're we're not gonna we're not gonna stop moving forwards. We're gonna keep uh, keep the momentum going that that Sean would have wanted us to uh, to carry on. Your last fight was the Edwards fight. Yeah, that's right. What'd you do with the money? I ask you this every time, but you keep winning <laughs> bonuses. So I'm like, I, I don't know what, you know, you're handed a check for 75, 55 grand. That's kind of cool. You know, everyone always asks me these kind of questions expecting for some uh, exciting answer. I, I did have a pretty good summer. I'm not going to lie. I, uh, I, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I had some fun. I had some fun with the money. But, did you, you have know, the specially I made bought... SS t-shirt? I like that. Is that for yeah, Sam Stout or you like a shortstop in softball? Or You know what? I just saw it in the store. It, it just spoke to me. I really? Know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, you, but you no, no, in. nothing yeah. too, nothing too sexy or exciting no. with the uh, with the money. I've you know I put some into to landscape my house and got put, got a new concrete uh, concrete pad. In my that's backyard. that's a terrible yeah, story. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I got a driveway. I'm sorry, I did. You know, I spent <laughs> some time on the beach and threw threw some some money around a, a little bit at the clubs. If that's what you want to hear. All right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got bottle service. You know, here's a bill you for know. Uh, you know seventeen hundred one night. Did you ever make it rain? I, yeah, I you gotta, didn't. Wow, well, a couple know, of singles maybe, here and there, maybe. Maybe I made it drizzle a little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not pulling a Mayweather with hundreds and <laughs> emptying a garbage bag all over the club. No, not gonna happen, huh? No. All right, looking ahead, because I mean that knockout was ridiculous. So I mean, you are on a uh, you know upward trend right now. Who do you want to fight? Because you you mentioned one name during the break to me, and I'm like, man, eh, not good enough. Uh, you know what? I actually I you're not a guy who calls people out, but to me, it's like I think you're at a point now. Where, why not get a guy who's on the rebound who is higher than you in the rankings? Why not a Melvin well, Gallard or someone like that? Well, that's that's that's, that, that's, that's know, a that's a high risk but a really high reward fight. It goes it goes back to uh, to what I was saying earlier. You know, I had a lot of trust in in uh, Sean Tompkins, and and now I'm I'm going in there without him. So it's you know my first fight back. Um, you know I'm you know I was I had a fight lined up with Dennis Seaver, and unfortunately I had to pull out of it and uh, Donald Cerrone took my spot and you know I'm not gonna I'm, I'm gonna get back to that point where I'm gonna be fighting top 10 guys like that but uh you know I think it might might be a better idea to just get my feet wet um and get used to my new training camp I can understand and, that and, you know yeah. bef- before I you know I don't want to set myself back right b- before I've uh, kind of figured out my my new groove you know what do you think of the title fight between uh, Edgar and Maynard Man, you can't you can't take anything away from that uh, Frankie Edgar. He's he's all heart. <laughs> he's, he's all he's heart. nuts. Yeah, I felt um, you know I like both guys, so I felt really bad. Gray yeah. Manor's a local. Gray Gray's a very good friend of mine. We've been uh, training partners for you know we started training together back in two thousand four, two thousand five, and uh, you know very good friend of mine. Uh, you know I was I was pulling for him, but uh, you know Frankie's just. He's just tough to beat, man. You can't. You got to really. You got to kill that guy to stop him. Yep. Uh, UFC 137 is right around the corner. Friday night we'll be out there three to seven with our live show. Our Jewelers of Las Vegas MMA Insider Show will be live uh, in the lounge there on the ramp up to the arena at the Mandalay Bay. And all our interviews are brought to you uh, on the MMA front by the Jewelers of Las Vegas. So at 137, uh, I don't know how you're. You're a fan. Um, to me, this is like a dream fight. It's a weird scenario with Diaz and Penn because it w- wasn't supposed to happen. It wasn't supposed to be the main event. Now it's the main event. But I would think guys in the sport are like, this is a cool fight. 
Yeah, you know, when when uh, GSP pulled out of the fight, I was pretty disappointed. You know, I'm Canadian. I'm a G- big GSP supporter and fan, and, and uh, he's a friend of mine that, uh, you know, I've known him for years. But uh, really, this card is stacked anyways. There's no there's no really huge names, no Brock Lesnar, there's no big marquee names like that. But if you take a look at this card, it's it's a terrific card. You know, you got Cerrone and Siver. You got uh, BJ and Diaz. There's there's some really great fights. You got uh, Jorgensen and, and Jeff Curran. Mm-hmm. You got Bart Palszewski and, and Tyson Griffin. It's an yep. amazing card. This is going to be, uh, you know, it's definitely going to be one to watch. UFC makes its debut on Fox. Do you guys get the magnitude of that kind of? Because I'll just tell you from a media standpoint and working around UFC uh, for us, you know, we kind of jumped on board as a radio station and stations because we have our Fox station too. Back in about 2004, and I still feel like we're one of the only radio stations that covers this stuff. It's getting better and better. Yeah. Um, but you haven't even had network TV support yet. You haven't had real media support yet. So imagine where it can go from here when you're on, you know. Big Fox on it's, November 12th. Yeah, to, to me it's really mind-boggling to think of where the sport's going. You know, just to think of how young it is right now. It's still really in its infant stages, and it's just the 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 amount of, of coverage it's starting to get. And, just and you know, I see the potential in the sport because I've, you know, been involved in it since really it it first came into to being. And, and, you know. Well, how many interviews have you done on radio and then back home where you're like, here's what the sport is. This is why yeah. it's not brutal. It's, yeah, it's not like that anymore. Yeah. The people I don't come to interviews and people don't ask me what the rules are anymore. Right. It's people know what it is, and and you know it's it's getting pretty hard to ignore for the people who don't know. No, this is such a major step because you know you stop and think about it. Uh, Fox is doing the World Series right now. They do the National Football League every Sunday, and they're doing the UFC. No, you're seeing promotions that's, for that's Junior Dos Santos that's and Cain Velasquez. That is, that is gigantic. Those are, that's Definitely. a whole new fan base you've never touched yeah. before. Definitely. Last thing. I always like to get the fighters' take on this one. Chael Sonnen. You like him? <laughs> he, i got to tell you, he, I mean, I, I do the blog on Yahoo, Cage Writer, and like, I almost feel like I'm overdoing it, but he's such a controversial character, and he, he, every day the guy comes up with something good. Like, yeah. it's starting to get to the point where – now we are looking at Anderson Silva going, dude, you got to step up and take this fight because this guy, he is really embarrassing you. You can't just lay back and not oh, say yeah. anything. He's, yeah, he's talks a, he talks a hell of a game. And really, and I was, I was there in Houston when he fought uh, Brian Stan, and he's, he's backing it up right now. He's backing up that mouth he's got. And he, you know, he looked pretty impressive. He, uh, you know, Brian Stan was on a tear, and he just manhandled him. He just was all over him like a wet blanket, and there was nothing he could do the entire fight. And I really think that he's got a very, very good chance of beating Anderson. Look what he did to him last time. Yep, he's not going to be intimidated. And and quite quite honestly, the the because of the way the first fight went, it kind of deserves a rematch. I mean, that definitely, was, that was definitely. A, totally does. It totally definitely. does. Uh, Chael is actually he's going to be hosting a Halloween party at a local club. Which I think tells you a lot. He's going to be doing. I think he's at like excess, and uh, he had, he dropped. He, his lines are ridiculous. I, I realize, it's like he dropped a line the other day on ESPN, and he said uh, basically Anderson already has his his uh, his costume picked out. He's either going to come as a duck or a chicken. Ooh, I like pretty, it. Good. pretty good. <laughs> That's not and you know bad. Anderson's just like you know seething, but like dude, you got to say something back then. It's almost like he has a team of writers working for him I, or something. Well, in the, the fight night thing in Houston. That was pure wrestling, but it was delivered so perfectly. He just comes up, and he's just like, you absolutely suck. (laughs) Steps back, pauses. The crowd's like, what the hell just happened? And then he he does like a loser leaves town match. He's he's, uh, definitely a showman. It's good stuff, yeah, but but those guys stuff. are needed in the sport too. Just oh, like you know, sure. mean for Brock sure. Lesnar. I would love you know. I know Brock's gone through a lot, but I want to see mean Brock Lesnar come back and exactly. You know, I think this when you get into individual sports like this, as opposed to team sports, you got to sell your personality as well as uh, you know as as well as your skill as a fighter. It's you know you can win every single fight, but if you don't, but if people can't relate to you, then they're not going to root for you. It, it, it's the same even in team sports. Because you look at what's happening right now. Look, Tim Tebow is not the best player in the National Football League. Yeah. But there's nobody who's getting more conversation than Tim Tebow because he's kind of this polarizing character. Exactly. Every sport needs its individuals. Again, the event on Friday night. Tell people what's going down. Six to eight at the Tap Out Training Center. Yeah, six to eight at the Tap Out Training Center. It's a memorial event. Uh, We're going to be doing some fundraising for for, in memory of uh, Sean, the coach Tompkins. Uh, there'll be lots of there'll be silent auction going on. There'll be you know it'll be a chance for for people to come in and meet a lot of MMA personalities that are going to be popping in, 
And uh, also on, on, on fight day on Saturday from uh, 12 till 2 o'clock at the Tapo Training Center, Boss Rudin and Kevin Randleman are going to be teaching a seminar. And, and uh, me and Mark will be making an appearance there as well. Very cool. Very cool. Hey, Bake, real quick timeout. Well, let's uh, pay some bills, and i got to come back with a goofy story. Oh, and then, boy. I don't know, I think Koken, but you are well-rounded now, man. For the old guy on the show, you want to do some Lindsay Lohan. All right, we'll do it. The NFL plays here. ESPN Radio 1198.9 FM.